guys, <clears throat> today I, I feel like I need to explain fusing, how, why, and uh, what it does. I have videos about this, but <clears throat> I have seen way too much chaos out there to know that I still need to speak on the subject. First of all, you guys have all seen a little fuse block like this. Well, there's a few things you need to know right off the bat about, especially this model, but most fuse blocks. But one, on the back back here, there's usually two little plastic pieces that go in here and cover up the heads of these bolts and keep the bolts from making contact with the metal surface that you're probably gonna mount this thing on. Because if all those bolts make contact with that metal, you're gonna short your power to ground and you're gonna defeat the fuse and cause a lot of heat, fire, Ironically, the thing that's designed to protect you in this situation is the thing that's causing the problem. So, a couple of things. One, make sure your little plastic tabs are in. If they're not, at least cover this with something or mount it on uh, plastic or put some rubber in between it and where you mount it or all of those things just make sure you're thoroughly insulating these bolts from anything that's connected to the ground of whatever surface you're mounting it to, okay? Another thing with these fuses is to make sure make sure that underneath the bolt that's holding that down you've got a flat washer like this and a little split washer like that the reason is the split washer will keep the nut from loosening up if the nut loosens up going to be on fire. <laughs> now if you're not loose as stuff, <laughs> uh, you end up with a loose connection. It'll still connect, but it'll only connect in tiny points and it'll get hot. When it gets hot, it'll get more resistance and pull away, melt and deform and get looser and more resistance. Before you know it, you've got one of those melted fuse holders that you see and you go, why didn't the fuse blow? It's all melted, the fuse failed. No, you failed. The fuse was just an innocent bystander. Make sure you're getting your bolts tight, your nuts tight. The connection is clean. There's a lock split washer it's either a split washer or one of the little uh, washers that has the little fingers on it that grabs. I forget what they're called. Some kind of locking uh, washer that prevents the nut from easily backing back off. If you don't have none of that, put some blue Loctite on it. And get the proper equipment. That's important. Fuse rating. Uh, what? Okay. So the first thing you want to do is pull up a, go online, pull up a wiring chart shows, uh, just Google uh, fuse gauge amp rating wiring chart, something like that. You'll find one. So let's say the wiring chart says that to run four feet, uh, if you run four feet, you can pull 700 amps. And that's actually, I think, I think that's accurate, actually. 
think that falls into the right realm. Uh, but let's say you can do that. So you can pull 700 amps on your alt gauge wire for four feet. And you're running a four foot alt gauge wire. So you know you can pull 700 amps through here. Now, what fuse do you need? Well, you need enough fuse to equal the amount of power you can pull through that wire. Not anything to do with your amplifier, you're fusing the wire. So if this amp will handle 400 or 700 amps at four feet, then you need uh, at maximum, maximum 700 amps of fusing. Well, this one goes to 400 amps. Uh, I have a whole bunch of 400 amp fuses. So what do I do? Do I run two of them? No, that would be 800 amps of fusing. That's more than this wire can take. So you would run one of these, or a 500, or a 600, or a 250, or a 100. It doesn't matter as long as the fuse rating is lower than what the length of wire in that gauge is rated to handle. The reason is, if this wire, which can handle 700 amps for four feet, starts getting 800, 900, 1,000 amps, it's going to start to get hot. And once a wire starts to heat up, the resistance of that wire goes up. So it gets hotter and heats up more and gets hotter and heats up more. And then it turns into a big glowing red metal fire starting machine. And you no longer have a car, maybe a house, maybe a yard, maybe your neighbor's house. Who knows? Gone. It's all gone. So the idea is if this wire should somehow manage to come into contact with the ground and it makes a good enough connection to start pulling hard current, big current, way more than what this wire can handle, before it melts down and causes a fire, the fuse will blow. Now, if uh, you need to pull a thousand amps for four feet, you either need to get two of these for four feet, or uh, I think, I think a, a double alt gauge will pull a thousand amps for four feet. Don't quote me on that, but I think it will. So you need to upgrade your wire. Once you upgraded the wire, then you upgrade the fuse, because now you have a new wire to fuse. So that's the first answer to the first part of this. Where, uh, what type of fusing do I need? How big does the fuse need to be? Notice I never said anything about what size amplifier you're powering, because it does not matter at all. The wire doesn't even have to be hooked up to anything. If it's running through the car and just laying out back there somewhere, it needs a fuse. Okay, I'm getting to the reason for that. So, where do you fuse? I got a big thing. Yes, sir. Well, yeah. Where do you fuse? Okay. The part of your wire that's on the other side of the fuse from the battery is protected. The part of the wire that it goes between your battery and the fuse is not protected. So if you've got your battery under the hood, as soon as you can make it to a fuse, the closer you can put your fuse to where that wire connects to that battery, the better. Because everything in between the battery and that fuse is unprotected. The wire that's in between the battery and the fuse that you can't protect needs to be secure so that it can't move around and get in danger and also as short as possible. Now let's say you're running that power wire from the battery all the way back 
All the way back. All the way back. All the way back to the back to another battery in the back. Okay? When you get to that battery, before you connect to it, you need to add another fuse. As close as you can to where it connects to the battery because this part is not protected. This part would be. Yes, if you have a battery in the back and a battery in the front, you need a fuse close to the back battery on this wire and a fuse close to the front battery on this wire, on the other end. Now, everything between this fuse and this fuse is protected. If any part of this wire gets cut and grounded and shorts out somewhere, both the fuses will blow because there's a power source on both ends. Now, if you're running this to an amplifier, so you got the front of your car, here's your battery in the front of your car, running a few inches to your fuse, okay? And all the way back, all the way to the car, to the amplifier, it doesn't need a fuse because the amplifier does not produce power, at least not this way. So if the wire shorts out anywhere in here, it burns that fuse out. Well, this amplifier is not going to be energizing that line. It's not a problem. But, you knew there was a but, didn't you? <laughs> Every wire has to be fused. So if you've got two wires, two power wires running to that amplifier, you need a fuse on each wire. Every single wire as close to the battery and alternator as possible needs a fuse right there. Unless you just don't like your car. If that's the case, there you go. Now you don't have to fuse ground wires, although they do carry current. And the reason for that is the ground wire is a ground wire and it if it becomes chafed and connects to the ground, well, it's already connected, so it's not going to matter. But if you are a member of Team No Fuse, rest in peace, car. <laughs> How to pick out amplifier wire. I can tell you about strand count weight per volume, uh, shielding thickness, all that stuff. Uh, we're not going to bother with it. Everybody's done that to death. I'm going to tell you a few basics. That's the stuff that's going to be really relevant whenever you're doing an install. First of all, I don't run CCA anywhere. Will it work? Yes. Will it corrode after a while? Yes. Will it fall apart? Yes. Does it carry half the power that, that copper does? Yes. Don't run CCA. CCA will get you in trouble. If you cannot afford to... Now, honestly, this is the truth, and I'm not dissing on anybody, okay? If you cannot afford to buy real wire, copper wire, then you shouldn't be doing this at all because you're going to burn some stuff up, okay? Put your money here first. Here second. Actually, this is third, honestly. Uh, put the money in the wire. If you don't care about your wire, you don't care about anything you look up to it, and you don't care about your car. All right, buying cheap wire is a good way to burn your crap down. Now, having said that, we're going to get past the CCA thing. We can have plenty of that discussion in the comments below. So, there's two basic types of wire. 
We're not even talking about that crap we were just discussing. There's the heavy, thick wire. Uh, and uh, GP Car Audio, as well as a bunch of other guys, will sell this type of wire. And I'll show you. Uh, this is kind of ugly, but this is not GP. No, this is though. This is some GP wire right here. And uh, this is the America series. And this is GP wire also. And uh, this is, I think it's called a diamond or what is it called uh, I forget the name I have to look it up here I want to get that right it's called a diamond edition yeah diamond edition this stuff now this whenever my uh, headway bank caught on fire in the back of my Tahoe flames and fire big flames coming up inside the vehicle Black smoke and fire and flames, inferno, hellfire and damnation happened inside my Tahoe behind second row seat. I had several types of wire running right there on top of that from, that was connected to that headway bank. And uh, uh, when it was burning, several of the wires in there burned melted uh down to the down to the wire itself let's look at uh, a piece of this let's see that's not too bad it didn't catch on fire this is a uh, uh from uh what's it called this Colossus from uh, New Concepts. This is the Colossus Flex uh, OFC Copper from New Concepts. And uh, we're going to see if we can make it catch on fire. It's pretty good so far. See that? Burned and it melted and cooked but it's not flaming. That's good. Passes the test. What we got here? This is from uh, Mesa. OFC, Ultraflex Power Cable from Mesa. Let's check it out. See how well it does. Same trick, we're putting fire on it. It's good, it went out, see that? That's what we want to see. Don't want that to continue to burn. We want it to melt and go out. Let's see what happens if we fire it up in its insulation. Give it some flames. That's good, went out. The idea is you want it to go out. Um, but going back to the story, if you uh, are mainly worried about, uh, or if you're wondering about the damage on this wire, if I rub the black off of it, have a look. <laughs> yeah, that stuff's tough. It has a really, really high thermal rating, this insulation on this diamond wire from GP it it doesn't it doesn't like to melt or burn this is the stuff that you want to use if you're going to put it in some serious jeopardy of fire best stuff out there but GP's wire this big wire is a really good wire and it's got that double jacket you see that so this is a marine rated I think and so it's got a double jacket double layer jacket well, this wire and that and the diamond wire are both really thick and really tough. It's hard to bend. That's the, the key thing. It's really good at conducting electricity. Uh, I mean, you can you can work with it, but you don't want to be trying to do anything really in, in, a little real intricate with it because it's it's pretty hard stuff. 
Uh, this is a, a new concept. So, yeah, this is new concept. It's all faded because it was laying outside in my, uh, so the sun kind of faded it uh, greenish, bluish, but that's irrelevant. The point is, this is also alt gauge wire, 100% OFC copper, much, much, much easier to work with. Okay, I mean, you can pull that into a little ball and it's like a spaghetti noodle. So if you're trying to do intricate weaving through things, this uh, new concepts, Colossus Flex stuff is way easier to work with. This blue hair, this is also the same kind of wire. It's really, really easy to easy to work with. This is a four gauge. I mean, you see, that's that's the jam right there. If you're trying to do something where you're, you know, trying to make it fill, fill around and whatnot, this is this is the jam. So the type of wire that you want, it depends on not just the gauge and the material, but also the jacket, how tough it is, what is it going to be doing. If you're gonna be running something underneath your vehicle, for example, like I have, running a double jacketed heavy power wire like this is gonna be a lot less likely to get damaged than running a soft, flexible, single jacketed power wire like this. But if you're doing an amp board or laying out a specific wire running it feeding it through around corners and you know making it try to making it lay exactly the way you want it using the softer wire from new concepts is going to be your choice this is another example of a uh, really thick this has a really thick uh, insulator on it this but it's also a soft wire and this wouldn't be wouldn't be ideal for running under your vehicle. You can get away with it. All of these will do the job, but if you're gonna run something in a place where it's likely to get hot, melted, abrasion, and it's, it's in jeopardy and you wanna protect it, then using one of these extreme, extreme wire from GP, this is gonna be your best bet. If you don't, if money is not the thing that you're worried about, what you're worried about is making sure everything is safe, protected, and corrosion-free, and all of that, to number one, the diamond wire, GP Car Audio. This is it. This is the money shot. Um, there just isn't anything any better. If you don't like the clear, you can run American Series from GP Car Audio. This will get it done. Marine Automotive. This is what uh, this is what the government uses for the uh, cell towers around the United States uh, when they're putting up the military cell towers. They use this for their power supplies. This exact wire. It's because it's marine rated. It's thermally shielded. It's got a really hard to burn wire. Let's see if we can get her. Get our flamer out here. See what we can make this do. I haven't tried to burn any of this yet. I'm gonna pour it on, buddy. There you go. Right back out. After all of that, we still got 90% of that, that shielding is still there. Look at that. There's hardly any loss of that thickness at all. Sitting there with a flame dead on that wire. You see it? It's right there. There's most of that thickness is still there unharmed. So if I'm running a wire under my vehicle by the exhaust, dragging around potentially rubbing against anything metal down there and stuff is what you want. What you don't want is welding wire running under your car. Welding wire is not designed for that. The insulation is really thin. Uh, but it's your money, you know. At least use copper. Get her done. If you're going to burn it down, burn it down with style. <laughs>
Well guys, I hope you enjoyed my craziness today. I figured I would do a freestyle video talking a little bit about fuses and wire. Some of the different aspects of wire. Besides all the crap that you guys hear about all the time. I want to talk about some of the other things that uh, can affect your decision on what wire to use or where to use it. If you enjoyed my videos, hit that subscribe button. That way you know you get little notifications and stuff. You can ring the bell. You don't have to ring the bell. I don't care. You ring the bell if you want to. I'm not, I'm not begging. I'm not going to beg. All right, I'll beg for comments. Comments, please, please put comments. I love it. I, I like the interaction. I like to answer your questions. If you've been my channel at all, I literally do not have a single comment anywhere on my channel that I have not responded to. Not one. I read every comment. If your comment is a stupid, stupid thing, like if you're being mean to someone or talking smack, I will read the comment. I may not respond to it, but I will like it or dislike it. I will do something. I will read the comment. If your comment is in any way human, you know, something neutral, nice, polite, uh, good constructive criticism. I'm down with all that. Correct me when I'm wrong. I'm down with that. If you come on, you know, being all mean, huffy and puffy and gonna like, you know, bully people, I'm not down with that. So just keep that to yourself. Anyway, I do read them all. Put the comments in there. Let me know what's up. If you like my, uh, my, my jam, let me know. If you think I'm stupid, let me know. Uh, I'm a big boy, I can tell you. I don't like you picking on other people, but you can pick on me all you want to, because, you know, I don't care. Ha! <laughs> Peace, guys.